Well, I think you can never find bitter remarks in my books because uh, uh, I see the relationship between Iceland and Denmark as a, 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 as a positive relationship. It's something that happened in history that Iceland, uh, through political uh, maneuvering in the in the in the in the sixteenth, fifteenth century, uh, came under the Danish crown. We had been under the Norwegian crown. We had been independent before. You know, this is just history. You know, and uh, and uh, if anything, I think uh, 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 the Danish kings. Uh, we're having a, a endless trouble with this uh, needy colony up in the north because Iceland didn't produce anything. It didn't, didn't produ produce anything but need, <laughs> but need to be taken care of. So I think if you look at it like that, you know, you have a different story than, you know, the grim colonizer, uh, you know, uh, oppressing some, some poor people. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's quite uh, normal for the, for the empire to be completely disinterested <laughs> in the discussion that is taking place uh, in the colonies or the former colonies, you know, that is the nature of the empire, it doesn't care, you know. So, uh, of course, here in Denmark, uh, you don't have to uh, take the discussion that we are uh, doing in Iceland, you know, and it was a very big step for uh, for for people in Iceland to even uh, uh, define uh, Iceland as a po as, as a post-colonial society, because the general belief there still actually is that uh, we were never properly colonized, you know, that we were always you know uh, independent in our hearts because we had the literature, we kept the language, you know. So, uh, so people like to believe that we do not have the same symptoms as the former colonies in Africa or the Caribbean or, or, or Asia. But we do, because we were a society that didn't take care of itself. And one of the things uh, uh, that happened during the financial crash uh, is that we came to realize that uh, so many of the uh, social institution that uh, you take for granted in, 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 in other countries, they weren't properly in, placed, in place in Iceland. And why, why is that? Well, one of the main reasons is that uh, we never had to take the discussion ourselves. I mean, the, the, the Icelandic uh, constitution, as it is today, uh, was brought to Iceland as a, as a present in uh, 1874 when, uh, when, 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 when the Danish king came, came for a visit and he gave us the constitution. So issues like uh, freedom of speech and, 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 and other human rights issues which are in the constitution, the debate about them was never taken in Iceland. So we, we don't have the, we do not have the tradition of discussing the fundamentals of society. And this is, this is very common in, in, in former colonies. It's interesting that uh, when, the, when the constitution was brought over by the Danish king, uh, the Icelanders were, of course, kindly asked to make remarks before it was finalized. And uh, they, uh, they had only one complaint. And that was they asked if this clause about freedom of religion was really necessary if it couldn't be removed because freedom of, freedom of religion, no, the Icelandic church didn't want to see that. That was the only discussion. They tried to take away <laughs> one element of human rights. So when the financial crash happened, we realized that maybe, may, maybe one of the reasons for it to happen was that these institutions like the press, for example, you know, they weren't properly placed and were, weren't ready to criticize what was going on in society in the years leading up to the crash. I don't think we are afraid of Denmark. <laughs> no, no, I don't think we're afraid of Denmark. I mean, I think we have, like I say, warm feelings towards Denmark. 
And Denmark is, is where it is, and it's a part of our history. And that's why Denmark is a part of my novels, at least the novels that take, take place before 1944, when we gained full independence. So our histories, they are intertwined. But uh, uh, I think w what you're describing has uh, more to do with island mentality than anything else. Because if you're, uh, if you're a tiny island, uh, you have uh, uh, two opportunities to become isolated or to go into the big world and see what is happening there. And uh, if you find something of interest, you might take it back home. So we are actually quite trained in just going abroad, bringing back the goods and uh, using those goods to, uh, let's say, enrich our society and enrich our culture. Uh, so uh, America, China, you know, we just go there, we take what we need and we bring it back. But we don't have any illusions, you know, that we will somehow overrule these nations. But there is something about, uh, 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 there is something about the Icelandic character which uh, makes it very easy for us to go out into the world and just stake our claims, you know. We, we, I mean, as, as, you know, uh, very early on, just as a young author, I, I felt very sure about myself, you know. I went to the f my first, uh, you know, literary meetings at the age of 20, I think, you know. And at, that's, at the same time, I was already corresponding with poets uh, all over the world and uh, translating and being translated in magazines here and there. And I never questioned if it was, if it was uh, normal or not that I felt so co confident, you know, about what I was doing. But I think if you have the confidence to go to the big cultural uh, centers of the world and bring back whatever you need, you also have the confidence of taking what you create and bringing it to the mix.